Hello once again. This lesson is going to be covering how to white out a text field's background. What is this and why would we need it? Well, sometimes we need to place a text field over the top of another element in the score. For example, occasionally we might require an expression to be placed on top of a bar line. Now you can see here that with this element I can't even get it to sit on the bar line. So the first thing I have to do is freeze this object so that it is no longer affected by magnetic layout. Now that the dynamic marking is on the bar line, it would be nice to white out its background so that the bar line doesn't go straight through the text. To do this, we have to open up Inspector, either by right clicking or pressing Control Shift I. Then we go over here to the background settings and click Erase, which will erase our text field's background. If we wish to increase the size of the whited out space, we have to make the text frame fixed and then change the size of the text field. But now that I've made the text field a bit bigger, you'll see that our dynamic marking is floating up the top of its text field. So we now have to change its vertical alignment. We do that here, and there you have it. When we print this out, it should appear as though the bar line breaks just for our dynamic marking. Sometimes, however, we will wish to have a whited out text field sitting on top of another object. For example, a line. To show you this, I'll first add a line and then add a technique. Sul Ponticello, for example. Again, to place the technique on top of the line, I have to freeze its position with magnetic layout. And then, as before, I open up the inspector window and then erase its background. So when we look at it here, there doesn't seem to be a problem. It looks fine. But if we go to print it, you'll notice that our line still goes directly through the text. And this is because the line has a higher Z index, which means that the line is sitting on top of the text. We need the text to sit on top of the line, and we can quite easily change this in the Appearance tab. We simply select our text and press Bring to Front. So we can't see any change here, but when we go back to print off the score, there we have it. Everything looks just as it should be. The problem, of course, is that Sibelius doesn't show you these Z-index problems while working on the score, so you'll often forget to change an object's Z-index and then get a bit of a shock when you go to print everything off. So that's it for this brief lesson. I'll see you in the next one.